Hey everybody, uh, just saying hello. Whoops, let me fix the camera a little bit. That's the best I'm gonna do. All right, I'm here in the, uh, oops, fell down. I'm here in the studio, Joe's studio. And uh, we're here to talk about uh, some different questions. If anybody has a specific question, uh, you can let me know. Uh, uh, what the question that I got this week was somebody was asking me about Joe's original reformer and how many springs it had. Uh, and I, that depends on when. <laughs> uh, there are uh, blueprints from, I believe it's Germany, when he was in Germany. And the reformer he had in Germany, uh, we know uh, it had seven springs because you can see the place where it designed that and it also had seven gears. So seven springs and seven, seven gears. So that's something that, uh, hi Leanne, hi everybody. Uh, so, uh, but once he got to the US, it was four springs. And I, I know that because I have an original. Let's see if I can show it to you right there. There we go, poor connection. So I can't move the camera that much, oh well. Anyways, so um, it's basically four springs. There's, um, well, what I can do, I'll take the, the, the bar off. And even though it, there's the bar from the original Clawfoot Reformer, and it has a, a place for four hooks for four springs, right? So we can see all the way through there. There we go, there's that. So you can see that. So that's basically, um, when we look at the, 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 the Joe's Reformer now, I know that there have been lots of other uh, variations by different people saying uh, that he had five. Uh, I've, uh, again, not in, as far as I know, not in his studio. Um, and when we look at the archives, not in the archives, he documented, did I ever see uh, a, a, a reformer with five springs? So I think that came after or later. And some people say he made different equipment for different people, but it, it's not necessarily, there's no uh, documented proof of that at all. That's just, you know, people saying it. And maybe true, may not be, uh, I don't really know. Uh, but at, but what I do know is when we look at the, the uh, primary sources and the, the evidence that we have in pictures and in the actual apparatus, the junior reformer uh, had four springs, four hooks like this one, uh, and this one had four hooks. We know that there was an, uh, a blueprint for one in Germany that had seven. And, uh, you know, the question I know some people have asked, well, why, you know, why was, why, why did he change it? And when you think about it, um, he didn't need as much variability. Right? And, and, and his springs also is different than a lot of, of, of the springs that manufacturers make today where they make them different uh, tensions. And that different tension is, is not sort of how Joe thought about things. Uh, he developed his system in relationship to the body working in gravity and the springs reproducing a certain amount of, of um, tension, right? That's what the springs do. They, they, they create the resistance, which is tension. And in doing so, one of the things that we can see that he did was with each exercise, there's a purpose for each exercise for what it does to the body in relationship to the stability, mobility, uh, balance and control that happens, uh, you know, within the functioning in life. And so to be able to challenge that, he did different spring settings and, and gear settings, you know, to, to, for size, but as far as the, the resistance, that was much more about the, the springs. And the springs that were on the reformer uh, were the same uh, resistance. There, there wasn't variability. Now, he does have lots of different springs but in the studio here that's behind me that's been re you know it's now in the museum and there is but you know there was a a, a, a whole box of, of springs and they were different sizes and different different things but on the the reformer that wasn't the case so maybe he could have done that uh, but again like I said there's no evidence to that that we know of 
And so um, we have to go by uh, as much as that as we can. And we do know that after his time, a lot of people differently changed things and added things and modified and tried to bring in other ways of thinking into ways Joe's way of thinking, which is you know the, the variable spring resistance, which is much more related to, to um, traditional strengthening ideology and, and, and a hypothesis of yeah, and it's and it's true that to with weights to get stronger you have to increase the resistance uh, because you're working either a muscle or a muscle group and when you do that you're working from the outside in and so when you work that way you really start to have um, a certain way of, of of building strength and Joe did it differently and and because we know sometimes less in Pilates is more, you know, so when you have less springs, you have to work harder, but where do you work harder? Not in the extremities, but in the core, you know, so in, in, the, in the torso, in relationship to, you know, learning to get that deeper control of the, your center of gravity and the upper and lower powerhouses connected to the extremities, right? So that's the relationship. And when you look at people who do a lot of weightlifting, uh, like you know, supersize, and they get really big. You'll notice what you'll you'll notice is that the the legs and the arms, as they increase the weight, get much bigger, right? They get much they hypertrophy. They get really big, but the core doesn't do the same because you can't take that resistance weight into the core because the extremities do it first. And when you look at function. And you look at the muscles, you know, you know, you look at the muscles in the, the arm or the thigh and they're long, you know, they're super long. Let me see if, yeah, you know, long muscles and they're fat. You look at the torso and they're thin, flat, or they're little tiny muscles. You know, you have a lot of them all together along the spine, but they're not, and they're all connected through the nervous system, but they're not one muscle. Whereas in the, the arms and the legs, they are one muscle and they're really designed to do the work. And so that's the, the lifting and the pushing and the pulling. And the core is more about the, the, the dynamics and, and, the, and the ability to, to um, function in a way that allows us to manipulate our environment besides just the work. And, and so when we, when we look at how Joe did that, he developed a system that puts balance between strengthening the core. And when I say the core, it's not just you know, below the belly button or a little bit above it, it's the whole, it's, you know, the whole spine. So when he looked at strengthening the spine, he, he definitely understood how to do that. And so the system is designed for that in relationship to the spring resistance. So that's one of the things. So when, you know, he started with seven and he figured out he didn't need that. And with four, he could get the variability that he needed for the functions that he needed to be able to allow the changes that he wanted to bring the body back to life, as he, as he would say, right? So those are the things that we need to do. Uh, hi, Rachel. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Riga. I'm, I'm just getting to, I'm talking away and I'm not saying hi to everybody. Hi, Mary. Uh, Jay Pilates, UK. Hi. Uh, I don't know everybody's name, so can't do that. Uh, Christina, hello. Okay, so Eileen, Ellen, different people. All right, so does anybody have any specific specific questions i think i just i kind of answered the uh paola answered that as far as um you know how many springs did joe's original reformer have so that's it and, and it is a very original seven but in the u.s it was four only as far as i can see in the archives and from again this this apparatus the claw foot that i have here that he brought up to the studio from the new york studio um it only has four in it. it. That was, we know that's probably from at least the 30s. Uh, there was a picture, uh, there are there is the, the 101 poster uh, of the original uh, return, um, reformer poster. I have it on my Etsy page, Pilates posters, if you wanna get the original uh, poster of the first poster he had in the US. And that also had four springs. So, hi teacher, how are you? Oops, let me see here. I'm trying to wave and I'm pushing the wrong buttons. All right. Flavio, what's going on, buddy? Um, so, um, 
The, the, yeah, um, thanks, Leanne. It's, it is a good poster. Uh, it, it shows uh, some basic exercises. He's wearing shoes. That, that his original reformer that he had on the poster, that headpiece didn't adjust. So there are, you know, there is definitely um, different things that happen that he did modify and adjust uh, over, you know, over a, a, a period of time, especially in the beginning. But then as we see, as he went along, the, and he did different photo shoots, like every like 10 years or so, uh, the, the exercises didn't change much. The order didn't change much. It had slight variations here and here, but it, it, it didn't change a whole lot. Uh, okay, so once he got something that worked and he saw that it worked and he did and it did what he wanted to do for the body, he didn't change it because it, it was doing what he wanted it to do. So, you know, that's the, you know, that's something that you have to, uh, you know, realize, right? So that's something that, you know, we can, we can deal with and, and understand is what he did, right? So something to think about. All right. So any other questions? Uh, I'm glad everybody likes their posters. And there's, you know, there's lots of posters, uh, archival things that you can get in the Etsy store, the Pilates posters. So if you're interested, go check them out. It helps support what we're doing here at the museum. And so this is the museum. Uh, and uh, it's a beautiful, let me, let me just, see if I can turn this around for a second. Where's the thing to turn to pick? There it is. So that's what I look at right now. That's out the door. So it's a nice, beautiful, sunny day. Very lush and green here in the Western Ber in the Berkshires in, in Western Massachusetts. Oh my God, it's keep, there we go. All right, so questions? Uh, I'll be here every Friday. People, you can DM me and ask me questions if you don't want to do it live. Uh, I, I, there are, I'll answer any questions that you have. Uh, in relationship to Pilates or and that could be business it could be exercise it could be apparatus uh, uh, the history uh, you know a lot of the history uh, Elaine and I do in other ways but that's also something I can discuss with people if you're not sure about things so uh, just about just about I'm sure there's a few things I, I you know I won't I won't discuss <laughs> but just about everything was there a second poster to go with the first one well, you know, it says that there would be another poster, but I have not seen it. And we are not, I have never seen it. And that's the only reference that I have seen that there was going to be another one. So there was plans. Uh, and then maybe the poster that he had on his wall was the second one. I don't really know. But it, it wasn't, you know, it, 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 it never became a poster like that. Okay. Uh, where, where are the Graz arm springs based on the original? They are so much longer than the replica springs that we use using the resistor. Well, again, the, 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 the springs that Graz have for the arm springs, they are a, a variation. That, that's, if you look at some of the old pictures uh, on the Cadillac, he did have those types of springs. But in the, in the, in the, the museum here, he had the small, he had their, there were two uh, uh, variations. There was heavy and light uh, arm springs, and there were heavy and light leg springs. Okay, so uh, that that there is a difference there, and so I think he had, uh, as far as the other arm spring that Grot uses, that may be where that's coming from, uh, uh, Rachel. I think. Do you have any springs left for sale, or did you did we buy them all at Last Pillow? Well, if you're coming to the pillow, I, I will have springs. I do have some, I have chair springs. I have leg springs. I have a few arm springs left. Uh, you know, I, one of the things that I did was when I, um, uh, well, I used to make uh, reproductions of all the, the, the Joe's equipment, the, the, the um, high chair, the, the wonder chair, the, the reformer. And so, and I would, I also had springs made. I took the Joe's original springs, took them to the spring manufacturer. I had them measure all the things that they measure, you know, the, the, the type of wire, the, the diameter of the wire, the, and then the, 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 the excursion, you know, because that tells you sort of how much they have to tighten it up and what they have to do. And whenever you make a spring, you'll see that they always say, you know, plus or minus two or three or, 
something like that. So it says it meets the standard, but it, you know they might be off a little bit. You know, individual swings are not exact. It's never exact. So, but that's what we have. Okay. Uh, let's see any the resistor springs are so good. Yeah, they are good. Uh, and again, the thing about that people need to know about the resistor is that. You know, the resistor, we didn't have a model to, to make it from, so we made it from the pictures. And we used the springs that, uh, uh, you know, that were here. <coughs> and we know that Joe, you know, there's the picture of him doing the arm springs, you know, on the deck, you know, where it's attached to the wall. Well, I have that here on the, on the museum as well. There's two eye hooks on the outside, and I use the uh, arm springs, and we can do the same sequence in the exercises. Did Joe invent the airplane board? As far as I know, he did. Uh, I've never never saw it anywhere else. And the, the you know Joe invented more than one. He had multiple airplane boards. Uh, there is the padded one that's a pillow that, for your head. There is the one loop one. There's the two loop one, and there's the no loop one. And then I invented one, which is I was like, well, if there's a one loop and there's a two loop, why don't we just make one with three loops? And that's what I did, and then Graz copied it, and some other people as well. But I, you know, I was the one who came up with the idea of having a three-looped uh, uh, airplane board because in the archives, Joe does two-footed work and one-footed work. And in the archives, it, you know, he he he, 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 did, he did, had it with um, you know the one loop. So we, you know, you have all those variables, and you can see some of the variables in some of the older archival pictures when he had a picture uh, for the Cadillac or the, or maybe I think it was the, um, the uh, massage table and you know, he's doing stuff. And then along the side of it, down below next to it, you can see a couple different uh, airplane boards next to it. So hi, Susan. And uh, Mammy, Winnie, any, I'm not sure. I think I, I don't know. Again, when you have different uh, handles here, I'm not sure who everybody is all the time. So, uh, so it, I may not get your full name, but, you know, I see you and I'm waving back. So any other questions? Because if not, I'm going to um, I'm going to end today's AMAP. Uh, I'll wait a little bit. Um, uh, anything that's going on? Uh, I don't. So we have our next uh, webinar, which is uh, not this Monday, but the following Monday is going to be uh, on uh, Joe's um some of Joe's books in his library. Uh, so if you're interested in and that, it, you know, you can come and join us. And it's not just the books, because in his books, one of the things that he did, he did a lot of annotations and, and drawings and little things that he did in the books, uh, you know, to, to make a reference of different things in relationship to his system. And we can see some of the correlations there. And I'm going to go through some of that. And we'll, we'll discuss that and you get an idea of, of sort of uh, where it came from because you know everybody thinks Joe's was you know amazing with his philosophy but a lot of his philosophy was not new um, I just read a book from the 1840s and it has a lot to do with the mind and body so Joe's understanding of the mind and body was happening you know uh, decades before he was even born so as far as the philosophy of exercise and education and things like that so how much shorter were the original former straps to the one today well, you know, uh, it, Leanne, I haven't, you know, the problem was the original ones were, were, were they were, bro they're broken and they're rotted. So I, I never, I didn't measure them. Uh, and when I made the, 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 the um, modified version, I made it closer to what uh, Romano wanted, which was closer to what Graz had at the time. So even though the, the frame was the same, you know, I did. We did change a few things. I I also made a a long version because she wanted a jump board because she liked the jump board. So I made it that way as well. Please, can I ask the dates for autumn at the pillow? Uh, the last um, it's the last weekend of September. I think it's I think it's twenty seventh, twenty eighth, and twenty ninth. And then the Monday after, we also have a uh, there's a, a a a workshop in Rhinebeck at Elaine's studio as well. And you can find all that information on Elaine's website under education, you know, the uh, Rhinebeck Pilates and under education. And it'll have both the, the Pilates at the pillow information and a way to apply. You have to be a comprehensively trained teacher to join us with that because 
we're doing um, apparatus and, and things. So if you don't have, if you're just mad, it doesn't really work. And, and it has to be more than just one apparatus. It's really trying to understand it within the system relationship as well. So if you are uh, comprehensively trained and you'd like to join us, uh, please, you know, go to the site. You can check out all the information, all the different workshops we're doing. This September is basically Archival Reformer, and we're going to be going over, you know, all, a lot of the archival exercises that are uh, doable for most. There are some advanced ones that we probably won't go through just because when we have a conference like that, we, you know, there's too many people that we don't know and, and, and we don't know what level you're at. And you can be a teacher, and, but you may not be ready to do advanced still. I mean, you may have done it when you're doing your training. But depending on how long it's been and how, what your practice is, it's not always uh, the, the safest ways. But we did, we're going to go over, and there's quite a few, the majority of them are going to be things that you can learn and, and, and take home and, and use the next, the next day when you get back to your studio. So uh, thanks, Leanne. Um, so uh, if there's, uh, yes, it's, it's, it, it is, it's the camaraderie that we have and, the other thing is, you know, I have all this archival apparatus here, the junior reform, original junior reformer, the bednasium, the high chair, you know, we bring a lot of that and either you can work on it here when we do the tour, we do a tour of the property and the, the museum and everything. Uh, and then we also usually take some over to the pillow so that on downtimes, if you want to be able to try out and take, you know, social media pictures and things like that of work yourself working out on the different original apparatus, that's also something that you can do when you come to the pillow. All right, so uh, uh, I think that's it as far as, and then I, you know, on every, if you're interested in arm springs and leg springs, every Tuesday at 12, uh, at one o'clock, I do an arm, you know, the resistor, you know, workout uh, using both uh, posters and you can buy the posters and then join in and, and follow along in the class and, and work on it out on your own. But you don't need to have a resistor to do it because it's arm springs and leg springs. So if you have a wall unit, you have a Cadillac, uh, you can do it. You need something to be able to attach leg springs and arm springs to, to be able to do the, do, do the, the, the uh, that class. So if that's something you're interested in doing, I have some people who've been, we've been doing it now for quite a while. And, uh, it, you know, we're, we're really, they're getting strong and good and you can join in and, and, you know, might be a little bit in, in the beginning if you're not used to it, but you'll pick it up and we'll, we'll you'll build a, a great workout with that and get a great understanding for you and your clients. Okay. So I think that's, that's all it is for today. So thanks for joining me and I will be here again, um, next Friday, every Friday, AMAP Friday. So again, if you have any questions, please DM me and send me the information, questions that you'd like, and I will do it here. Um, I, I, if, if Elaine and I do a subscription, it's it's four ninety nine a month, and if you're a subscriber, then I you know you can have a question and you can come on live with me and have a discussion live. We're saving that for the people who subscribe. But if you have a regular question, you can send it to me DM, and I'll still bring it up and talk about it here. But if you want to talk about it live and be part of that, the, the, the conversation with me, you'd have to be a subscriber to be able to do that. OK, so that's one of the, the you know, the, the, the perks we give for, for subscribers. OK, so thanks for joining me and I will see you all next week. All right. Have a good one. Thanks for joining. Bye bye.